Hello and welcome to my home. It's almost my 80th birthday. I'll be celebrating it in less than a month. And I thought it would be good to just take one look back at an event. There have been many events, of course, that have shaped my life and many things to celebrate and be really happy about. Only one downside is that my dear Sue is not here to celebrate it with me. But you are, so welcome. It was back in 1989 that I was invited to go to Czechoslovakia as it was then. It was still under communist control, but I was to teach evangelism. In order to do that, we met in secret in the high Tatra mountains east of modern day Slovakia. People would come from different directions and uh, rendezvous uh, quietly where we could spend the day learning how to share our faith. Anyway, it was one evening while there that I was invited to have a prayer meeting at one of the homes in the village of Vavrasovo. Vavrasovo is just a very, very small village. And this uh, elderly gentleman who owned the home, his name was Milan, and uh, he uh, asked me a question. He said, do you know Colonel James Irwin, the astronaut? I said, yes, I do. He's, he's a friend of mine. And he said, I knew he would be. You see, when he was on the moon, there was a problem with some of the equipment on the landing craft. And he couldn't find out what the problem was. So I got on my knees and I prayed for him. And as I was praying, I saw that he got on his knees and he was evidently praying. And it was while he was there on his knees that he saw the problem. And God told me on that occasion that James Irwin would visit my home in Vavrasovo. Well, of course, that was a very unlikely thing to happen. But he said to me, do you think that you could invite him to come to Vavrasovo? Well, I got home and made a phone call. Jim was not at home, but his wife Mary answered the phone. And I told her about Milan and his vision. And she said, Vic, plan a trip and I'll guarantee that James will come with you. We planned it for the following May, not knowing that on the 17th of November, 1989, a revolution would occur. Days before, the Berlin Wall had already fallen, and now the Velvet Revolution took place in Czechoslovakia. In January, I had a phone call from the head of the Baptist Union in Czechoslovakia. And he said, we hear that you're coming to our country. We'd like to invite you to do a crusade in Prague and another one in Bratislava. So I said, well, only if we can go east to a little village of Vavrasovo. And so it was planned. My dear friend Stanley Butte went ahead uh, to do all the planning for the Crusades and we had a wonderful time. In Prague we took over the indoor sports facility, an Olympic facility, 
and we were invited to the palace to meet with Václav Havel, who was then the president-elect. And we had a wonderful meeting with Václav Havel. Uh, he had that day met with Mother Teresa and Herr Willy Brandt of Germany and the Prime Minister of Iceland. They cleared it out his diary for the whole afternoon so that he could meet with Colonel Irwin. It was a great meeting, finishing with us holding hands around the room with he and his advisers in prayer for his country. A few days later, he was elected as president. We went on down to Bratislava, held the crusade there in a football stadium and also met with Alexander Dubček, who had been the leader of the Prague Spring before the Russian tanks came in and quashed that particular revolution. Then we went east. And what you're going to see now is a video. Of course, in those days, they didn't have the great equipment that we have today, so uh, you'll have to put up with a few glitches. But even so, I think you'll get a view of the event there. Firstly, with me preaching to the gathered crowd in the small town of Litovsky Hradok, and uh, you'll see that the people were just crammed in close together, uh, but it was a wonderful occasion. And then dear Jim, who died only 15 months after that, exactly 20 years after he splashed down on his uh, return from the moon landing, 20 years later, he died of a heart attack but not before he had spent wonderful years spreading the good news of Jesus Christ, the news of the man who from heaven walked on earth. I hope you enjoy this and uh, just celebrate with me the occasion of my 80th birthday. God bless you. Uh, May I say how delighted we are to be here in your pleasant valley. So we can tell you that we are so happy that we are here in this beautiful valley. For me, it is a return to your beautiful country. For me, it is a return to your beautiful country. And many of you in this area are dear friends. Many of you in this area are dear friends. So for me it is a return home. When we planned this trip uh, some time ago, we had no idea of the changes that would take place in your country. And we have spoken to huge crowds in Prague and Bratislava and now here. Hovorili sme obrovským zástupom v Prahe, v Bratislave a teraz sme tu pred vami. On Tuesday and Wednesday we spoke at the Olympic Sports Hall in Prague. Útorok a v stredu sme hovorili v olimpijskej hale v Prahe. To many thousands of Czech people. Bolo tam mnoho tisíc Čechov. And we saw hundreds responding to the love of Jesus Christ. A stovky odpovedali na lásku Ježiša Krista. And uh, yesterday we were in the amphitheater in Bratislava. Again we spoke to thousands of people. And we saw hundreds of Slovaks come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And tonight we pray that the same will happen here in your valley. That God will speak to every heart here tonight. We should not be surprised if that happens. 
because many thousands of people around the world are praying for you here tonight. People in Thailand and Japan. People in Australia and Canada. People in the United States and Great Britain are praying for you here tonight and rejoicing that you have the freedom to hear these words. On Tuesday afternoon, we met with your president, Václav Havel. And after some time of conversation with your president, I asked him, may I pray for you and for your country? We stood around the table and held hands. And together we prayed for the nation. Yesterday we met with the chairman of the Slovak parliament and two deputy prime ministers. Again we held hands around the table and prayed for this nation. Because at this time there is great need for prayer. God is doing a new thing in our world today. Yes. There is a shaking of the nations. The Bible prophesies that that will happen in the last days. That the nations will be shaken and it will cause great surprise. Now if this is a work of God, then we need to pray to God. And there is a prayer that I would personally want to pray for you tonight. It's found in God's Word, the Bible. The Word that men have tried to destroy. Down through the centuries, for 2,000 years, people have tried to quieten the voice of God. There have been bonfires of Bibles. But God preserved his word. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will last forever. And contained within this word is all that we need for right living. Contained within this word is all that we need to discover our way to God. I'm going to read a prayer that the Apostle Paul wrote. He said, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. He's praying here that we may know God's plan for our lives. The God who made us didn't do it by accident. We are not the result of some accidental bang. We are the result of God's careful creation and planning. And he has designed us so that we should have a relationship with him. And the starting point of that is to know that he loves you and wants you to know him. The most important thing we can do whilst we are on earth is to discover God. 
najdôležitejšia vec, ktorú na zemi môžeme urobiť, je objaviť Boha. And to discover his plan for our lives. A objaviť jeho plán pre náš život. You can only do that as you look into his word. To sa dá len tak urobiť, že sa podívaš do jeho slova. And as you ask God the Holy Spirit to come upon his word. A keď požiadaš, aby Boh Duch Svetý zostúpil na to slovo. And to speak to your life where you are. A aby hovoril do tvojho života práve tam, kde sa nachádzaš. I pray that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. Pozím sa, aby ste boli naplnení poznaním jeho vôle. When I prayed with your president on Tuesday. Že som sa v útorok modlil s vašim prezidentom. I pray that God would guide backslash. I pray that God would guide those who make the laws. I pray that God would guide this nation. But that won't happen unless ordinary people start to look at what God has said. Každý človek, obyčajní ľudia nezačnú čítať to, čo Boh povedal. And as God speaks to you, a keď Boh hovorí k vám, then you seek to obey him. Vtedy ho sa snažíte poslúchať. Seek to put it into practice. Snažíte sa to dať do praxe. Not just to hear God's word, but to do it. Nie len počúvať Božie slovo, ale praktizovať ho. And that's why Paul goes on in his prayer to say this. A preto apoštol Pavel pokračuje vo svojej modlitbe takto. Pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of his calling. Modlím sa, aby ste žili život, ktorý je hodný jeho povolania. That you may please him in every way. Aby ste sa mu vo všetko mohli páčiť. Bearing fruit in every good work. And growing grow in the knowledge of God. You see, God speaks to us so that we can live right. And the, the reason that we should live according to His plan is first of all to please Him because He loves us and He wants us to love Him but also because when we please Him we live a life that is pleasing pleasing to ourselves and pleasing to one another All of God's laws are designed for our health. Všetky Božie zákony sú tak vytvorené, že sú na naše zdravie. When we break God's law, we cause physical destruction. Keď porušujeme Božie zákony, spôsobujeme fyzické zničenie, deštrukciu. You can see that sometimes in your own life, in your own body. Niekedy to môžete vidieť na svojom vlastnom živote, na svojom tele. When you violate God's law in your life, keď porušíte Boží zákon vo svojom živote and take into your body that which is destructive a veriete, prijímate do svojho slova to, čo ničí it destroys you physically ničí vás to fyzicky but it also destroys you morally ale ničí vás to aj morálne and it has a consequence upon society a má to potom dôsledom na celú spoločnosť When we look at the consequence of sin, it's devastating. And so when we start to live by God's plan, we reverse that process. Society is healed. Because we are healed. Morally and physically. And spiritually. We live a life to please Him. But you'll never do this by yourself. I can tell you that. I tried to live my life my way. And, and as a result I landed in prison. And it was only when I was in prison that I picked up a Bible and started to read about the truth of God. And God changed my life. And as I call upon Him day after day, He gives me the power to live according to His plan. If I try to do it by myself, I fail. 
Zlyhávam. But I say, God, come into my life. Ale hovorím, Bože, prídi do môjho života. Change me. Zmeň ma. Remake me. Premeň ma, premodeluj ma. Remold me. Premodeluj. And then I can live according to your plan. A potom môžem žiť podľa tvojho plánu. For 30 years I have put that into practice. 30 rokov toto uvádzam do praxe. And I can tell you the truth. A môžem vám povedať pravdu. God changes lives. Bog mení život. He changed my life. Zmenil môj život. He's changed millions of lives. Zmenil milióny životov. Because he gives the power. Pretože on dáva moc. He gives the strength to change. Dáva silu na to, aby ste sa mohli zmeniť. That's a God activity inside. Je to Božia aktivita, jeho činnosť vnútri. The, third, the fourth thing that the Apostle prays is that we may return thanks to God for what he has done for us. Let me ask you a question. Are you thankful for your freedom? Are you? Are you? There is another kind of freedom that is greater than that which you have just experienced. And just as you are thankful for your nation's freedom, your nation has been born again. Today is a new day. And you can say thank you for that. So each one of you can be born again. You can be a new man. You can be a new woman. You can be a new teenager. You can be a new child. Because God has given you freedom. This is the freedom he has given you. He says giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you. To share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son. Every one of us, as long as we are in sin, as long as we are living our selfish lives, going our own direction and neglecting God's call upon our lives, we are trapped. We are in prison. We are bound. And we are without hope. And God says, you can be free. You can be free. You can know for certain today that you will go to heaven when you die. You can know for certain that every sin you ever committed has been forgiven. You can experience a relationship with the God above you. And you can live at peace with him. And you can receive all that you need to face this life. Not that God takes away the problems. But he'll be with you through every one of them. And he says, I can make you free. I can deliver you from that bondage. I can give to you life. But there's only one way. Only one way. Every other religion of the world asks how and why. 
každé iné náboženstvo na svete sa pýta, pýta ako a prečo. God gives the answer. Boh dáva odpoveď. God came to this world in the person of Jesus Christ. Boh prišiel na túto zem v osobe Ježiša Krista. That's what we celebrate at Christmas time. A preto oslavujeme Vianoce. You'll hear in a moment how a man walked on the moon. You'll hear in a moment how man walked on the moon. Za chvíľu ide počuť, ako človek chodil po mesiaci. Here is a greater miracle. Ale toto je väčší zázrak. God walked on earth. Boh chodil po zemi. God became a man. Boh sa stal človekom. He lived in Jesus Christ. Žil v Ježišovi Kristovi. For a purpose. A urobil to s týmto účelom. He lived a perfect life. Žil dokonalý život. He was the only man that ever lived without sin. Bol to jediný človek, ktorý kedy žil bez hriechu. Even the man that condemned him to death. Dokonca aj ten, ktorý ho odsúdil na smrť, said, I find no fault in this man. povedal, na ňom nenachádzam žiadnej viny. The man that betrayed him, Judas Iscariot, sám Judas Iscariot, ktorý ho zradil, before he committed suicide, prvnež splachal samovraždu, said, I betrayed an innocent man. povedal, zradil som nevinného človeka. This God, innocent man, did something for you. Tento Boh a nevinný človek, čo si pre teba urobil. The same as he did for me. To isté, čo urobil pre mňa. He died upon a cross. Zomrel na kríži. To pay the penalty for our sin. Aby zaplatil cenu za naše hriechy. That's what makes it easy for a criminal to understand. A toto je pre kriminálníka ľavké pochopiť. I did many things wrong. Ja som urobil veľa zlých vecí. I deserve to be punished. Zaslúžil som si trest. But Jesus took my punishment. Ale Ježiš vzal môj trest. Jesus took your punishment. Ježiš vzal tvoj trest. He took your place on the cross. Zaujal tvoje miesto na kríži. And he bought for you freedom. A kúpil pre teba slobodu. He gave to you the gift of eternal life. A dal ti dar večného života. Just as three days later he rose from the dead. Presne tak, ako za tri dni neskôr stál z mŕtvych. He says, you too can live. A hovorí, takisto ty môžeš žiť. You can live now. Môžeš žiť teraz. You can live when you die. A môžeš žiť vtedy, keď zomrieš. You will go from death into life. Pôjdeš zo smrti do života. You will go from this world into the presence of God. Pôjdeš z tohto sveta do Božej prítomnosti. Through the work of Jesus Christ. Skrze dielo Ježíša Krista. We pray that before this night is out, Modlíme sa prvne, než pomíne tento večer, that many of you will have cause to say thank you God. Aby mnohí z vás mali dôvod povedať, ďakujem ti Bože. Thank you for the new birth of Czechoslovakia. Ďakujem ti za znovu zrodenie Československa. But thank you more. Ale ďakujem ti ešte viac. For the new birth within. Za znovu zrodenie vnútru. Thank you that I have been born again. And as you bow the knee before him tonight, you will start to live a brand new life. Listen carefully to the words that James Irwin brings. And as he speaks to you, let him speak to your mind. But let him speak to your heart. As he brings to you the message of God. That today you can start to live for God. God bless every one of you. Thank you.
speak to those who know. I'm grateful that you have your freedom. Because then we could come and be with you. And we could have this great meeting. I'm glad that one of your own people had the dream to bring an astronaut. And I'm grateful that my wife was able to come with me. We live in a very similar place in the United States. And so we feel very close to you. And I do want to share my testimony with you. To tell you what God has done for me. And what he can do for you. When I was a little boy, I desired to know more about God. I had a mother and father who were Christians. And I went to church. But when I was 11 years old, I went to a revival service. And I learned that I was really not a Christian. Because I had not invited Jesus Christ into my life. And so that night I made my decision. And I invited Jesus Christ to come into my life. It was a very happy moment. There were tears of joy coming down my face. As I said, yes, Lord, I need you. And I invite you to come into my life right now. And looking back on that, I realized it was the most important decision I had ever made. And I will be praying that you make that decision this afternoon. You will not leave this place until you invite Jesus to come into your life. Well, I was also interested in airplanes. I wanted to fly every airplane, I wanted to fly high and fast. And I became a test pilot. But then I had a horrible accident. I was just about killed. When I was conscious, the medical team came to my bedside. They told me both my legs were broken. My jaw was broken. They said your right leg so badly shattered they want to amputate your foot. He said, Erwin, we don't think you'll ever be able to fly again. You can imagine my reaction. I thought I was destroyed. When I left my bedside, I called out to the Lord. I said, Lord, why do you let this happen to me? 
Hovoril som, pane, prečo si dovolil, aby sa mi toto stalo? You left me up so high. Tak vysoko si ma pozdvihol. Now you let me fall so low. Teraz si ma nechal tak hlboko padnúť. Lord, is there something I'm supposed to learn from this? Pane, je niečo na tom, čo z čoho sa môžem naučiť? Lord, have I been faithful? Pane, či som nebol verný? I realize I've not been faithful to the Lord. A ty som si uvedomil, že som pánovi nebol verný. Oh, I drifted far from him. Veľmi ďaleko som od neho odišiel. I was looking for excitement in the air. Vo vzduchu som hľadal svoje vzrušenie. Looking for excitement on the earth. A hľadal som vzrušenie na zemi. So I drifted far from the Lord. Veľmi ďaleko som od neho odišiel. But I called upon the Lord. A ty som volal na pána. I said, Lord, forgive me. Povedal som, Pane, odpust mi. And Lord, heal me. Pane, uzdrav ma. And he answered that prayer. A odpovedal na tú modlitbu. Because circulation was restored to my right leg. Pretože ten krvný objek v pravej nohe sa obnovil. I went up to amputate. A nemuseli ju amputovať. But the greatest miracle was given another chance to fly. Ale najväčší zázrak bol to, že som znovu mohol lietať. But I had to wait two years for that. Musel som na to ale dva roky čakať. Finally, I was... Put back in my old project. Nakonec jsem se dostal zpět do toho jistého letového programu, kde jsem byl předtím. And I was able to fly the airplane that set the speed and altitude record for the United States. Dostal jsem se do letadla, které v té době vytvořilo světový rekord v výškovém a rychlostním letě. But by the time I flew that airplane, it was now obvious that man could fly much higher and faster. Ale v tom čase, když jsem letěl na tom letadle, bylo už celkem jasné, že člověk může letět ještě vyšší a ještě rychlejší. Because the Soviets had just launched their first cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin. Protože Sověti právě v té době vypustili svého prvého kosmonauta Yuri Gagarina. And the whole world knew it now it was possible for man to fly in space. A teraz celý svet vedel už, že človek môže lietať do kozmu. I thought that was the ultimate flight. A to som si myslel, to je najvyšší vrcholný let. Oh, I desire to be an astronaut. Strašne som si želal byť astronautom. And finally I had my opportunity to become an astronaut. A konečne som dostal príležitosť, aby som sa stal astronautom. I trained for five years. Peť rokov som trénoval. I always wondered if I'd learned everything I need to know to be safe and successful in space. Musel som všetko sa naučiť, aby som bol úspešný a bezpečný v kozme. My daily prayer is, Lord, if you want me to go a little higher, help me learn these things. A každý deň som sa modlil, Pane, ak chceš, aby som ešte vyššie letel, pomôž mi naučiť sa tieto veci. In the summer of 1971, my prayers were answered. V lete 1971, boli moje modlitby vypočuté. Our instructor said that we were ready. Náš instruktor povedal, že sme pripravení. And we made our preparations to leave the earth že všetky prípravy na odlet zo Zeme sú pripravené, sú urobené. They awakened us early. Ráno nás zavčas sú zobudili. They fed us a big breakfast. Dali nám veľké ranejky. Put us in our fancy space suits. Obliekli nás do smiešných skafandrov. They drove us slowly to the launch pad. A pomaly nás viezli k štartovacej rampe. Then the elevator took us slowly to the top of the tower. A ten výťah nás pomalý vyviezol na vrch tej veže. They carefully placed us in the spacecraft. Opatrne nás vložili do lode. They tied us down. Priviazali nás. They closed the door. Potom zavreli dve. We got very quiet as the anticipation continued to build. A všetko tam utíklo a očakávanie rástlo a rástlo. The hours went by very slowly. Hodiny ubiehali veľmi pomaly. The last minute went very fast. Ale posledná minúta veľmi rýchlo utiekla. Before I knew, I heard the word ignition. A zrazu som počul slovo štart. And I sensed all that power that was lifting us off the earth. A v tom som cítil obrovskú tú silu, ktorá nás odputala od zeme. Oh, it was a happy moment. Oh, to bol šťastný moment. It was almost as happy as that night when I'd invited the Lord Jesus Christ into my life. Skoro tak šťastný, ako ten ten večer, keď som Ježiša Krista pozval do svojho života. There were tears of joy coming down my face as I felt that mighty power lifting us off the earth. Slzy radosti tiekli po mojej tvári, keď som cítil tú obrovskú silu, ako nás vyhá do priestoru. You know, at last it was my turn. Vedieť, že konečne som ja na rade. Twelve minutes later we were orbiting the earth. As we came over the Pacific, we fired the engine again. And now we were on course for the moon. Three days later we arrived at the moon. 
tri dni neskôr sme prileteli k mesiacu a we descended to the surface. A zostupili, uh, leteli sme k povrchu. And we hit very hard. Veľmi tvrdo sme pristáli. We rejoiced we were on the moon. Ale sme sa veľmi radovali, že konečne sme na mesiaci. And when I got out of the spacecraft, I looked up at the high mountains that towered 5,000 meters above us. It was a beautiful little valley in the high mountains of the moon. Unfortunately, there were no pine trees. Nothing growing at all. No life. No sound. No sky. Just looking up to the black canopy of space. So much reflected light from the sun, we couldn't even see the stars. But there in that beautiful little valley in the high mountains of the moon, the Lord was there. Ale tam, v tom krásnom malom údolí a pri tých krásnych vysokých vrchoch, tam bol Pán. As the Lord was there, the Lord is here. Tak ako Pán bol tam, Pán je tu. He is everywhere. Je všade. He wants to meet our needs no matter where we are. Chce odpovedať na naše problémy bez ohľadu na to, kde sme. He knows where you are. A vie, kde si ty. And he wants to meet your needs. A chce odpovedať na tvoj problém. He wants to lift you up. Chce ťa pozdvihnúť. Wants to make you a new creature. Well, the Lord was on the moon. I did not see him. But I knew he was there. Because he answered our prayers. There were many answers to prayer. All of us were Christians that went to the moon. Very active in our churches. <laughs> and so we were men of faith and men of prayer. I had one very difficult problem on the moon. The transmitter for our scientific station would not come up. Teda vysielaciu stanicu a nechcela, uh, nechcela sa uvoľniť. I did everything that was necessary, but still it would not come up. Všetko, čo bolo potrebné, som urobil, ale predsa sa nechcela uvoľniť. And in my confusion, I prayed. A v tom zmetku, v tom trápení som sa začal modliť. And I said, Lord, what shall I do? A povedal som, Pane, čo mám robiť? And I heard these words. A počul som tieto slova. Jim, down on your knees. Jim, kľakni na kolena. And I sank to my knees. Tak som sa sklonil na kolena. I can see what the problem was. A tam zbadal som, čom bol problém. Because there was an opening there in the unit. Bol tam jeden otvor v tej jednotke. I can see what it failed. A videl som, čo tam zlyhalo. I was able to fix it. A mohol som to opraviť. And then the station came up. A to začala, tá, tá stanička začala sa, sa uvoľňovať a, a rozbíva sa. Like a little altar in front of me. A vyrástla predo mnou ako malý oltár. And I just thank the Lord for that immediate answer to prayer. Ďakoval som pánovi za, za tú okamžitú odpoveď na modlitbu. You know how thrilling it is to have immediate answer to prayer no matter where you are. Viete, až je to zrušujúce, keď vám Boh odpovie na modlitbu bez ohľadu na to, kde ste. But particularly when you're out on the moon a quarter of a million miles away from home. Zvlášť keď ste na mesiaci, to je štvrť milióna mil vzdialené, asi 350 tisíc kilometrov. And then it was the guidance that he gave to us as we were looking for a white rock. A potom nás viedol tým spôsobom, pretože sme hľadali bielý kameň. All the scientists wanted us to find a white rock. Vedci chceli, aby sme našli bielý kameň na mesiaci. They said that will be the most important rock that you could find on the moon. Povedali, že takýto kameň je najdôležitejší, aký na mesiaci môžeme nájsť. It will represent the mountains of the moon. It will actually represent the mountains of the moon. Ten kameň bude predstavovať alebo reprezentovať pohoria mesačné. We all thought it would be easy to find. Všetci sme si mysleli, že bude to veľmi ľahké nájsť taký kameň. But we got to the moon, we thought it was difficult. 
Ale keď sme prišli na mesiac, zistili sme si, že to bolo veľmi ťažké. Because there was so much dust. Pretože tam bolo strašne veľa prachu. The dust and cover the most of the rocks. Väčšinu tých uh, kameňov pokrýva prach. But on the second day we managed to drive up into the mountains. A druhý deň sme mohli jazdiť až do tých hor. And we found the white rock. A našli sme bielý kameň. It was sitting on another rock. Sedel tam pekne na inom kameni. It was almost free from dust. Bol takmer úplne bez prachu. It seemed to be saying, here am I, take me. Ako keby hovoril, tu som, vez by ma. All we had to do was drive over to it. We announced the world, we found it. Stačilo, aby sme tam prišli a vzali ho a našli sme ho. We found a rock that you want us to find. Našli sme kameň, ktorý chceli, aby sme našli. And almost immediately, the press labeled it the Genesis rock. Takmer okamžite, Klač ho nazvala uh, kameňom Genesis. They knew how important this rock would be. Vedeli, aký tento kameň bude dôležitý. We were so happy. Boli sme tak šťastní. We thanked the Lord. Ďakovali sme Pánovi. Because it was an answer to prayer. To bola odpoveď na modlitbu. And also an example of God's guidance in a faraway land. Bol, bol to aj príklad Božieho vedenia v ďalekej krajine. Our mission was a success because we found the white rock. Náš let bol úspešný, pretože sme našli bielý kameň. And my wish for you is that you find what you're looking for. Moja túžba a prianie vám je, aby ste našli to, čo vy hľadáte. Did you find the real rock? Našli ste ten tú pravú skalu? The real rock of Jesus Christ. Ten tú pravú skalu, ktorou je Ježiš Kristus. And I must tell you, this is not the real rock. Musím vám povedať pravdu, že toto nie je ten pravý kameň. This is just a plastic phony. To je len plastické napodobenina, to je model. I wish I could have brought the real thing. Želal by som si, keby som bol mohol skutočný doniesť. But unfortunately, the real world doesn't look like this anymore. Ale náš nešťastie, ten pôvodný, už takto nevypadá ako tento. They cut it into many small pieces. Rozrezali ho na mnoho malých kúskov. Sending it to scientists around the world. A poslali ho vedcom okolo sveta. But they did make an extra model of the white rock so I could share it with you. Ale vyrobili pre mňa osobitý model, aby som vám mohol ukázať. So this is just funny. Takže toto je len napodobenina. But I want to lift up the real rock of Jesus Christ. Ale chcem vyzvihnúť pred vami tú pravú skalu, ktorú je Ježiš Kristus. Because Jesus is real and He is alive. Pretože Ježiš je skutočný a žije. And He's the answer for every one of us. A On dá odpoveď každému z nás. And then my last day on the moon, we are driving our little car. Posledný deň na mesiaci sme jazdili v tom malom autíčku a dívali sme sa na tie nádherné hory a vtedy som bol inšpirovaný k tomu, aby som citoval verš z Biblie. Bol to prvý verš zo Žalmu 121. Pozdvihujem svoje oči k horám, odkiaľ prichádza moja pomoc. And I knew that my help was coming from the Lord. A vedel som, že moja pomoc prichádza od Hospodina. The one who made the heavens and made the earth. Od toho, ktorý stvoril nebesia aj zem. And he made the moon and made it possible for us to go there. A on stvoril mesiac a umožnil nám, aby sme sa tam dostali. And so the Lord was part of our mission. Takže Pán bol súčasťou nášho letu. Most important part of our mission. Najdôležitejšou súčasťou nášho letu. Pretože bol tam, aby odpovedal na našu modlitbu. Bol tam, aby nás viedol k našim objavom. A inšpiroval ma, aby som citoval písmo. Umožnil nám, aby sme videli Zem asi tak, ako to on vidí. I felt so special to be standing on the moon and looking up to see the earth. Cítil som sa veľmi zvláštnym človekom, že som mohol stáť na mesiaci a dívať sa na zem. The earth was so beautiful. Zem bola tak krásna. Just a beautiful blue jewel in the blackness of space. Krásny, modrý drahokam na černote kozmu. But it was so small. Tak vyzerala tak malá. It was just the size of a marble. Mala len veľkosť kuličky. Just this size, I can hold it between my fingers or cover it completely with my thumb. Some of you might be surprised it was so small. 
Maybe you see the moon larger than this. If you do, I suggest you try to hold the moon some night. You'll find the moon just the size of a very small pig. It's about a half a degree. The earth is four times larger than the size of a marble. But I was so impressed to look directly overhead and there was a I knew it was my home. I knew it was your home. But I couldn't see Czechoslovakia. I couldn't see any of you. But I knew that God had made a special home for us. And he has a special love for us. And I was reminded of John 3.16. And I didn't quote it. I wish that I had. Let me just share that with you tonight. That God so loves the blue planet. That he sent his one and only son. And for those who would believe in him, they wouldn't perish, but they would have everlasting life. New life available for each one of us if we just believe and receive Jesus Christ. I came back with a, a new perspective on the earth. New appreciation for the blue planet. A love for the people of the earth. A renewed love for the Lord. And I simply rededicated my life. I said, Lord, here am I, and take me and use me as an instrument of your love. And send me wherever you will to share your message. To tell everyone that you're alive. That you love us. That you came all the way to the blue planet. That we might have new life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The Lord must have heard that prayer because he kept me busy for the last 19 years. Traveling around the world and telling the people of the earth that there is new life in Jesus Christ. Telling everyone that Jesus walking on the earth is more important than man walking on the moon. And that's the most important thing I has ever happened on the blue planet. Was the visit of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus wants to walk today. He wants to walk in your life. And he's just inviting you. He's waiting for you to invite him to come into your life. He wants to be your dearest friend. And so Jesus is calling to you. He's just sent us to be his messenger. To tell you that he does have a plan for your life. He's the one who wants to lift you up. Yes. I come with great love for you. But Jesus has a greater love. Because he gave his life for each one of us. His blood was shed for our forgiveness. And we all need forgiveness because we've all sinned. And then he was resurrected from that grave, demonstrating victory over death itself. 
potom bol skriesený a to je víťazstvo nad samotnou smrťou. And we share in that victory through belief in Jesus Christ. He ascended into heaven and he said he would send his Holy Spirit. And we have his Holy Spirit. He is with us. He is our comforter and our counselor. And the best news, he said he's coming again. So the answer is Jesus Christ. Because in Jesus, forgiveness for yesterday, there's strength for today, and hope for tomorrow. I placed my hope in Jesus Christ. Have you placed your hope in Jesus Christ? <laughs> Have you invited him into your life? This afternoon. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that you will receive Jesus Christ. Because that's the most important decision we ever make. Pretože to je najdôležitejšie rozhodnutie, aké kedy môžeme urobiť. Because once we invite Jesus Christ in our life, we know why we're here and where we're going. Pretože keď ho nás príjmeme do svojho života, tak vieme, prečo sme tu a kam ideme. We know his plan for our lives. Vy poznáme jeho plán pre svoj život. We know God in a personal way. Budeme poznať Boha osobným spôsobom. We know that we're here for a short time. Vieme, že sme tu na krátky čas. But it's only what we do for the Lord Jesus Christ is going to last for eternity. And once we invite Jesus in our life, we know that our final destination is to be in heaven, to be with him for eternity. The decision to receive Jesus Christ. You can either ignore him or you can accept it. You can be lost or you can be saved. And it all depends on you. It's your decision. But I trust that you will invite Jesus into your life this very day. Dnes, práve dnes, pozvete Ježa Krista do svojho života. Aby ste ho nečakali dlhšie. Because there is freedom in Jesus Christ. Pretože v Ježovi Kristovi je sloboda. For the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Kde je duch pánov, tam je sloboda. Freedom to be the person that God wants you to be. Sloboda k tomu, aby si bol človekom, akého Boh ťa chce mať. You need Jesus Christ. Potrebuje Ježa Krista. I need Jesus Christ. Czechoslovakia needs Jesus Christ. And I rejoice that we can be with you this afternoon. That we can invite you to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I want you to know the joy that I experienced. The joy that I experienced when I invited Jesus to come into my life. When I said, Lord, I believe in you and I invite you to come into my life right now. Yes, I want you to know the joy of knowing the Lord and serving the Lord. Would you like to make that decision this afternoon? If you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, just put your hand up so I can see where you are. You're simply calling upon the Lord and saying, Lord, I believe and I wish to receive you right now. Keep your hand up as I look around. It's a moment 
great moment in your life. It's a great moment in my life to see your hands raised. And I know the angels in heaven are rejoicing today. Because they've seen your response to his love. The love of Jesus Christ is reaching out this afternoon. The new life in Jesus Christ. His new life for Czechoslovakia. Because of the decision you've made this afternoon. I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you for this great day. I thank you for my dear brothers and sisters. Thank you that you would arrange this situation. That we might be invited into this beautiful little valley. Surrounded by the high mountains. We rejoice that your spirit is here. And that men and women, boys and girls, desire to know you in a personal way. That so many have called out to you and said, Yes, Lord, come into my life. Yes, I want to know your plan for my life. And I wish to pray for each one who invited Jesus Christ into their life. And just pray after me these simple words. Father, I thank you for my life. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus Christ to the blue planet. Thank you that you sent him just for me. Father, I am sorry for my sins. I ask for forgiveness. I invite Jesus Christ into my life to be my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, that you are with me forever. Father, thank you that I can pray with my dear brothers and sisters. I thank you for this day. I thank you that we are now united in your Holy Spirit. That we know why we're here and where we're going. That we know your plan for our lives. That we have hope in Jesus Christ. And there's hope for the great country of Czechoslovakia. We thank you, Lord, for our lives. I ask that you would send in the abundance of your Holy Spirit to touch each one of my brothers and sisters. They might be new creatures in you. 
aby boli novými stvoreniami v tebe. And they would faithfully serve you. Aby ti verne slúžili. And I pray in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Sa modlím v tom drahom mene Ježiša Krista. Amen. Amen. Well, I do hope that you enjoyed watching that video of our time in Czechoslovakia. I'm holding here a cross. It is a constant reminder to me of that particular trip because this was presented to me right at the end of our time in Czechoslovakia. It was made by one of the leading artists in that country. And as I hold it here, it reminds me that when I was in Spurgeon's College from 1964 to 1968, the college motto was et tenio et tenior, which is Greek for I hold and am held. And that has been the story of my life since I met with Jesus in a prison cell in Winchester, England. I hold and I am held. I hold out the cross in my preaching, always declaring that it is here, on the cross that Jesus died, that he took the penalty for my sin, all of my sin, and all of yours. If you have not yet received God's forgiveness through Jesus Christ, I tell you this, that the offer is there for you at any time freely to receive. Jesus said, he who believes has everlasting life. Please, if you have never bowed the knee to accept him as your saviour, please, please do it now. You can write to me at the address that will be at the end of this video and I'll be very happy to send you one of my little booklets. It's called Just Grace. I want you to know that God's grace is there for you. God bless you.